What's up guys, my name is Karol and welcome to Ads Courses, a place where you can learn digital marketing and web analytics tricks. Today you're going to learn all you need to know about Google Ads Universal App Campaigns. I'm going to quickly run through the creating process, which is very easy, and then I'm going to talk about the best practices and strategies on how to get the most valuable and cheap installs of your app. You will also learn how to measure your effects and how to optimize these campaigns. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Okay, so are you ready to learn something new? Just hold on to your hats and let's start. Universal app campaigns are actually one of the easiest campaign types in Google Ads to create, but still you can make a lot of mistakes while creating them. So let's run through this process together right now. So just simply click on this create new campaign button. And right now you just have one option, app. And here you can select what mobile platform do you want to target, Android or iOS. And here you can search for your ad in Google Play Store. So let's create a demo campaign for this Vogue app application. And let's hit the continue button. Now let's name our campaign. Okay, I will talk about the campaign structures later in this video. And now here is where you put your text ideas, so your text ads that will appear. And this is actually the most important section in Universal App Campaigns. So you really need to focus on this one. Okay, so I just put my ad text over here. You have only 25 character limit over here, so you need to really think about what you want to put it in your ads. If you want to get some ideas for your text ads, you can simply click here, and here you will see your ASO description. Okay, what you need to know here is that these texts may appear separately in your ad, but they may also appear together and Google system will actually combine all of them and will search for the best solution. So you need to keep that in mind and create text that will fit together. However, they will be shuffled. So simply don't write about the same feature in other texts because they may be duplicated. And here you have other ad formats that you can add. And these are actually optional, but I would recommend that you add at least a video ad or HTML5 ad. Why? Because video ads will actually expand your reach greatly. And this is where your ads will be shown in Google services. And we have Google search network, we've got Google display network, and all of the Google apps like Gmail. And we've got Play Store, it also includes the Play Store search. And we have YouTube, and here your ads may appear as a video or as a native ad. So the more ad formats you actually add, the more places your ads will appear. And adding a video ad will expand your reach greatly because from my experience, video ads in universal app campaigns are performing the best. And there are tools that will help you to create your video ad without a big budget. So it won't be a problem. And you can always simply screen record your app and create this kind of ad that also may be very effective. Of course, you can create a campaign without a video ad and add it later, but you should be aware of that if you don't have a video ad, you're losing. You also have the option to add image ads, like static banners, and you have an option to add HTML5 banners. And in Universal App Campaigns, I would recommend to add not only an animated HTML5 banners, but to create an interactive ads that will actually be a demo of your app that will present a specific functionalities of your app and they would be interactive. So people would actually be able to interact with the ad and later hit the call to action to install it. And this is actually a great practice and you should create an HTML5 interactive ads. And the static image ads are actually the last that you should create because they just don't perform as good as the others. Okay, so now we have the location options. These are the standards, so you could target one country or countries or many countries and you have this advanced location options over here and you should be aware of these targeting settings. I would recommend to hit the people in your targeted locations in most cases. And here you have the languages targeting that you can select. And here you have the budget. I will talk about the budget settings later on this video. So let's just put $50 and here you have the bidding options. This is the other very important section. So let's talk about the bidding types in Universal App Campaigns. Right now in Google Ads, we have three different bidding types in Universal App Campaigns. There is a fourth one coming up. I will talk about a little bit about this uh, later in the video. And the first one is the install volume, so the CPI. And we have a CPI 
with likely to take an action and we have an in-app actions CPA campaign. So let's talk about each of them right now. Okay, so the first one is the install volume and this is a bidding type that you should use when you want to attract as many new users as possible and you should actually run this kind of a campaign all the time to generate new users the cheapest way and in this case it's recommended that you set up a budget that is at least 50 times greater than your target CPA. So for example if you generate installs for one dollar per install your budget should be fifty dollars. Another one is the advanced install volume. So you will target people that will most likely install your ad, but the system also will take into account people that will most likely take an action that you select from your events, but it will be still mainly focused on generating install volume. And in this case, it's the same as install volume. Your budget should be at least 50 times greater than your CPI. And the last one is in-app action, the CPA and you should choose it when you want to find users that are most likely to complete an in-app action. So for example, like a purchase or level up, and this campaign won't be focusing on generating installs, but the event that you will choose from your events. And it's recommended to set up a campaign budget at least 10 times your CPA, because here your CPA will be probably much bigger than your cost per install. It depends actually on what kind of an event you will choose, a purchase or some kind of a different event. So now I'll show you how you can import Firebase events as Google Ads conversions. Okay, so after you log into your Firebase account and you of course create your events in application, uh, this is a list of your events here in the analytics events section. And here you have all of your events. This is a demo project, of course. And here just mark as conversion the events that you want and they will appear here in conversions also and after you do that you should connect your google ads account with firebase account and after you do this you will be able to import firebase conversions into google ads and after you import your events you will be able to actually switch to in-app actions or select the users likely to perform an action bidding type because you can't select them when you don't have your events. And here you can set up your cost per install or cost per action target. So let's go with $1, for example. And you can change the start and end date and save and continue, and this will create the campaign. Okay, so now let's talk about the best campaign structure and optimization techniques. Because universal app campaigns are fully automatic campaigns, you need to be aware of the learning process. And it's highly recommended that you will wait with your changes before you collect at least 100 conversions so that the system will have enough time and data to be able to optimize your performance. And the first learning process takes about seven days. So remember to be patient and wait the first seven days or at least 100 conversions before you make any changes to your campaign. Okay, so now let's talk about the best strategies when it comes to universal app campaign structure. Because of course, with time, you will be running more than one campaign. And this is an example of a bad practice. And here we have campaign one, which is an install optimized bidding campaign targeting UK. And we have a second campaign, which is also an installs optimized campaign, uh, but targeted globally. And by globally, I mean also UK. So in this example, these two campaigns, the first and the second one will fight with each other for impressions. So this is a bad practice. And we have a third campaign, which is an install plus likely to purchase. So this is uh, the second bidding type where it's focused on installs, but also most likely to take an action. And because it will also be focused on installs, this campaign will also fight with the other two campaigns uh, for impressions. So this is a bad practice to create campaigns like that. And here we have a good practice, a good campaign structure. We have also a campaign one, which is an install optimized campaign for UK. But the second one is an install optimized campaign, global, but with UK excluded, so that they won't fight each other for the UK impressions. And we have a campaign three, which is a purchase event optimized. So this is an in-app event bidding type campaign. And because of that, it won't fight for impressions with the previous campaigns because it doesn't care about the installs. It cares about your event. So this is a good campaign structure. Okay, so now I'll give you some optimizing tips. And the first one is to avoid making too large of bid and budget changes and too often. 
because like I said before, you shouldn't make changes when the campaign is learning for the first time, but also later on, you shouldn't make too big of a changes. So you shouldn't change the bid or the budget uh, larger than 20% every 100 installs. So 20% is a max change at a time, but you should stick for about five to 10% at a time. Okay, another one is only run a target CPA event optimized campaigns against events for which you have enough data because the system needs to have enough conversions to be able to optimize the campaign. So the best practice is to have at least 10 to 30 events a day, but the best performance comes when you have way more than that. So this will be the enough data for the system to deliver the best performance. And if you don't have enough volume, you could try to create a max install advanced bidding type campaign. So it will try to generate these events for you. And another solution would be to create an in-app action campaign, but try to select an event that is happening before the final event, the final conversion that you're interested in. So for example, don't target for a purchase event if you generate, I don't know, like two events a day, but maybe you should try to target events like going through a premium screen in the app or adding to the basket, etc. I also have news for you. Google is preparing a new app campaign format right now that will focus mainly on monetizing your app, not just generating installs. So if you want to know more about them, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next episode. Bye.